Hey guys, so switching things up a bit today for this video, I'm just gonna go head out and shoot some expired film. Got some Fuji NPS 160 that expired in 1998. And this is something that I don't really ever do. Uh, so also just a way to use this camera for the first time, which is the uh, Mamiya M645 1000S. Uh, this camera is new to me. So a way to play around with some expired film, run a few rolls through this camera and just get a feel for things. And then uh, at the end of the video, we're actually gonna jump back in here, gonna look at the images uh, once again, and I'm just gonna give a little quick recap about my thoughts uh, on how they turned out. And I will mention one thing, uh, like I said, this camera is new to me. Uh, even though it was tested apparently uh, and was supposed to be working fine, I did have a few issues with light leaks on some images. A uh, little bit of a bummer, but at the same time, uh, comes with the territory and uh, is what it is considering this was just a bit of a, an experiment with some expired film. So anyways, let's jump into things. So it's interesting, I actually haven't shot much expired film at all. A uh, couple rolls of 35 years ago, just through point and shoot cameras. Um, but kind of the rule of thumb, I guess what you hear is people saying that you should rate the film uh, lower every 10 years, one stop lower. But I think with this stuff, it expired in 97. I'm just gonna rate it as 100 instead of 160 and then probably expose for the shadows like I normally do with color negative film. Uh, yeah, and we'll see where it goes. I mean, regardless, it's, Sometimes it's just all about experimenting and, and seeing what results you get and trying things out and having fun with it. So, see what it's like. So right after I finish that little spiel, I come across this sign that's weirdly interesting me for some reason. It tipped over in the ditch here, so gonna shoot it. So it looks like there might be a place up here behind this fence I walked by here the other day. Definitely worth checking out. So like I mentioned, I'm shooting with the Mamiya 645 1000S and I have a 55mm 2.8 on here and I bought this separate from the camera body. And usually on a 645, I'm, I'm using a 75mm or an 80. Uh, but this focal length would be equivalent to somewhere in between 30 and 35 on 135 format, which I really like. But uh, for some reason, it just feels a little awkward uh, shooting with it today. Maybe just because I'm used to, to a little bit of a longer focal length, but uh, we'll see what it's like by the end of the day. And then, as for meter, the prism on here is non-metered, so I have a Sekonic L308S, and I actually bought this as a backup just because uh, the 558 that I own, which is a spot meter, uh, is back in Canada. So I picked this up here in the UK, and I actually uh, like it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Just super compact, really light, and then it's an incident meter, but you can also slide the dome off to the side, and you have a reflected meter here, which I believe is around a 40 degree angle. Uh, so it's really nice, depending on what situation you're in, uh, you can, use it in two different ways just to get a, a nice accurate reading. So pretty nice piece. So about a little over halfway done this roll uh, through the Mamiya. I gotta say, so far, I'm, I'm liking this camera quite a bit. Um, you know, pretty easy to use, seems to work really nice. I uh, got the prism finder on it, which is nice and bright, and you know, I'm usually really happy with Mamiya lenses, so I have no doubts that uh, it'd be pretty nice results from this one, but we'll see once we take a look. So you know, shooting in areas like this where the subject matter doesn't really interest me definitely is the biggest challenge for me as a photographer, but I think, uh, you know, in return, these are the times where you kind of grow the most just because you're really forced to, you know, 
build your skills when it comes to composition and light and color and pay extra attention to those things. Not to say that they aren't always important, but you know, sometimes when the subject matter's there and you're really excited about it, all that stuff kind of comes together a little easier. So, you know, as much as I do struggle at times out uh, shooting like this, I, I really do think that this is at least where I build my skills uh, the most as a photographer. So two images left on this roll. Pretty happy with what I got so far, I think. I mean, won't know until I see the images, but uh, I do have some more uh, of this film in my bag. May load up another roll, but definitely running out of light right now. So the light is getting really nice. Still some clouds in the sky, but little hints of it are poking out every now and then. This is a really nice scene. So I was just kind of heading home, thought I was done, but it, you know, I forget how long the light stays out now. 8.45, so I got another half hour still, uh, and the light is getting really nice. So I'm gonna revisit a spot up here that I shot for the uh, Pentax Auto 110 video. So that's pretty much a wrap, just about out of light. I uh, shot about one and three quarter rolls today and pretty happy overall with the stuff I found and what I shot for the most part. So good day and nice to get out and use the Mamiya at the very least. Okay, so a little bummed that the camera wasn't working properly, but uh, when it comes to the results of the expired film, I'll say that I kind of have mixed feelings. And, you know, obviously with the film being expired, I expected it to kind of have a unique look, which it certainly did, but I don't really know if I'm sold on it or not. And I'll talk about that a little more when we look at some of the images. Um, but I certainly have seen a lot of images shot on expired film uh, from other artists that I do enjoy. So maybe I just need to uh, try some more of it in the future, maybe uh, in some locations and for some work that excites me a little bit more. But uh, anyways, let's jump into it and take a look at a few of these. Okay, so the first thing that I noticed with this film is that it definitely didn't get enough light. Uh, like I said, I rated it at 100 and then I exposed for the shadows, but uh, even still, uh, that obviously wasn't enough. Uh, so some images aren't too bad, like this one isn't bad, uh, and the next one. But even still, uh, a lot of the shadow areas kind of have this green cast to them. And uh, on some of the images, uh, they do start to get pretty grainy um, if we zoom in. So anywhere where there's kind of shadows, there's this heavy kind of green cast and a lot of grain. So obviously, um, you know, I, th I think the film definitely needed more light uh, and that's one takeaway for sure. Uh, this was very clearly a misfire, <laughs> super underexposed. Uh, let's see if there's any other examples here. Uh, even this one here, I did open these up quite a bit, but you can see uh, a lot of grain. And what's interesting is I was talking to a friend recently who shoots a lot of uh, expired MPS. That's his favorite film to shoot. And he was saying that the film really, really needs light. And he, he rates it at 50 or even sometimes 25. And he was saying that um, on a sunny day, even with lots of light, uh, he'll still rate it around 50. And then once you get closer to dusk, uh, he'll, he'll bump it to 25 and try and give it even more light. And, and what's really interesting is if we look at some of these images here, these were shot near the end of the day. Um, and this would have been the meter still at 100 uh, and I would have been exposing properly according to the meter and you can see that uh, super grainy in the shadows and a lot of that kind of green cast. And then the second thing with this film is the color. So just super saturated. The colors I got from this are really, really kind of punchy. Um, the reds, the yellows, obviously the greens. Um, if we go back to this image, uh, the greens are really kind of heavy. And then as it got later in the day, uh, kind of into the dusk, um, I noticed that the shadow areas and the midtone areas really started to pick up this kind of blue and teal cast to them, um, which is to be expected a little bit, obviously, when you're getting later in the day. Um, but this is kind of a unique look for sure. Um, so this one would have been dusk. That one, this is actually uh, a frame from a, a roll that I shot on the uh, 6x6 Super Iconta. Exact same thing, you can see the pavement's getting a lot of blue, a lot of kind of uh, magenta. Uh, so not sure how big of a fan I am of that. It's obviously kind of a cool look, it's unique, but uh, I don't know if I'm sold on it. 
but yeah, just really punchy saturated colors. Um, there is, let's see, this image, the reds in this image are just super saturated, really kind of popping. This was end of day as well, and we have more of that kind of tealy blue cast. Um, yeah, decent saturation on the car here. So certainly a unique look. Again, I'm not sure how much I'm sold on it. Obviously, I understand that, uh, you know, unpredictability is just something that comes with shooting expired film. Uh, you know, this stuff was uh, 98 is when it expired. So, you know, 22 years ago, it's a long time. And the thing is, is when you're buying this stuff, unless you buy it from, say, a photographer who uh, cold stored it uh, for its entire life, you really have no idea. Um, there's a lot of factors that come into play. You know, this could have been kept in someone's car under the seat for 20 summers in a row or something crazy like that. So uh, there are a lot of things that come into play and that I'm sure can affect, you know, the final outcome. So obviously that's part of the fun. Um, but for me, that's also kind of uh, a little bit of the, uh, the turn off. Um, but we'll see. I think in the future, I need to experiment a little more. And uh, at the very least, this is just something that's, you know, fun to do. Try out some of this film, pick some up, and uh, you never know kind of what the results are going to be like that you get. So, um, yeah, I'd love to hear in the comments if you have shot expired film, uh, what your kind of favorite stock has been, and then uh, what your kind of technique has, has been for exposing what you've discovered after shooting some of it. Um, like I said, I know for me in the future, I'm definitely going to uh, not hold back when it comes to giving it more light. Uh, that's for sure. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you aren't following on Instagram, I'm going to post a link in the description below. Check it out. That's where I post all my current work. Um, and as always, thank you guys. We'll see you soon.